guys, welcome back to part two of our E3 coverage. I'm so happy it's almost over. I'm Jeff. <laughs> I'm Ron. It only took me like three to four hours compiling these fucking notes. I feel Jesus. so bad. I feel so bad for all the people trying to cover this fucking conference like on the show floor. Because they're like out on the floor having to actually go play it and then run back to like, I guess, their hotel room to like type up a report on it and shit like that and go run their ass back to the showroom floor. It, it It's probably, I always imagined E3 and Comic Con to look like the scene in Johnny Dangerously when all the reporters run out of the room and run into the phone booth at the same time and it tilts over and falls. Well, well Comic Con now, uh, did you see World War Z where all the zombies pile on each other and go <laughs> over the wall in like Israel or whatever? That's what Comic Con looks like now. That's Hall H. That was just an allegory for Hall H, so what World War Z was. <laughs> but yeah, okay. Yeah, you uh, say World War Z, my brain goes south part. Yeah, right. So good. <laughs> ah, so, the ending of that movie was so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carbon in the full little bread pit get up is my favorite part. <laughs> the beard and everything. All right. So on the part one uh, E3 episode, we covered EA, Xbox, and Bethesda. Today, we're going to run them through in chronological order again. So we are doing the PC gaming show uh, Ubisoft, then Sony, and then wrapping it up with the Nintendo Direct. Um, so real quickly, there was quite a bit at the PC gaming show, uh, but I, tr- I try to just focus on what might be relatively up our alley or should be mentioned just because we need to focus more on the other conferences. Uh, right. Age of Empires is getting a definitive edition. Uh, Microsoft Studios is bringing it uh, back for the franchise's 20th anniversary with remastered 4K UHD graphics gameplay improvements. Uh, Xbox Live multiplayer and a fully remastered soundtrack. Did you ever play Age of Empires? Um, very little. I had a buddy that was really into it, though. Uh, yeah, my, one one of my former editors. That's like all he's been talking about on. Like that was like his, uh, basically like show stealer moment because he's such a diehard fan because he's super into those type of games. Like, uh, it's a little bit kind of like Civilization. Is isn't that kind of what I'm? I've never actually played any of those type of games, so I I wouldn't really know where to begin on it. Yeah, I wouldn't know where to begin on it either. I mean, I did like Warcraft and Starcraft, so I and I barely even dabbled in those. I didn't get into any but, of. I like the the uh, upgrades that we're getting to all the old classic games that yeah. we loved from our childhood. I'm Especially curious the, what the Starcraft else is gonna... one. Starcraft, Starcraft one I cannot cool. wait for. When is that supposed to come out? That they get to fucking know. I'm, I am assuming that'll be at BlizzCon in November. Probably. Um, all right, next up, uh, XCOM 2 uh, is releasing an, uh, a new pack for it. I guess it's called War of the Chosen. Uh, did you ever play any of the XCOM games? I didn't even know that they were that big of a thing. I just knew that Steam is really trying to get me to buy it and has been for a while. It's one of those where the people that are into it, they are hella into it. Um, The story will also be expanded with the arrival of the chosen champions of the aliens that will challenge players with each skirmish. More details to come, uh, but XCOM 2 or The Chosen is confirmed for release on August 29th. It's another, like, that That was a big thing, is they were were actually pretty smart to me when setting up the PC gaming show, because, you know, two of the ones that I've included and a bunch of the ones that I had to ask for time were RTS. Like, they, they, they get their audience. So they were yeah. they were pretty smart about it. Um, yeah, I actually have XCOM Enemy Unknown, I think it might have been. Whatever, like, the more recent RTS one that, that actually was also on consoles. Mm-hmm. I have it because of one of the PS Plus free month things, but I haven't played it yet. Although it looked interesting. I thought they did a damn good job because RTS on a console is hard as hell to pull off, and they actually made it they made it as streamlined as humanly possible. What is ironic is one of the worst games I've ever played in my life was StarCraft on the Nintendo 64. It's it's a bitch. It I mean, was those, fucking terrible. Those games are hard enough to get working correctly on uh, a PC, and then to have to make it be able to work simultaneously, it is uh, like just... I never well, understood. I had a buddy that had, uh, I think it was Red Alert or Red Alert 2 on PlayStation. And I was like, fuck you, buddy. I am never, ever even attempting that. 
I would agree. Uh, the last thing I have from the PC gaming show, uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Um, they also had a presence at the PC gaming show in addition to the Microsoft one because yeah, they announced that it was coming to their, to their console as well for the the timed exclusive. What it looked like. Uh, the main developer for it, Brendan Green, was on stage to discuss new additions to the game, which will include uh, vaulting, new weather effects, and a brand new gun. Uh, modding and new maps are also on the horizon. Uh, but stability remains the main concern for the, for the developers because it is in early access. I've actually been playing it tonight. I uh, since uh, you might be able to tell with the new webcam because I look a lot clearer. I'm sorry, America. Just <laughs> FYI. Uh, but I was able to finally have a chance to play it tonight. It's really fun. One of the other things they were able to announce. Um, uh, I don't know if it was actually during the the PC gaming show, but at some point they announced a zombie mode for it. But it's not just zombie mode. It is player controlled. So you're going to have really? certain players as the humans and then certain players as the zombies. And it's another iteration, just like their main Battle Royale Hunger Games type game mode. Like they have a, a clever take on the main gameplay for their main multiplayer mode and also a clever one with the zombies because it's, you know, it's it's kind of like going after that crab, but it is its own flavor because... I think the last thing that had something similar to that was what, like Left 4 Dead. I think Left 4 Dead 2, I think had where you could control like the uh, the smokers and the specific zombies. I was gonna say which one was which one's newer, Black Ops 2 or um, Left 4 Dead? Newer, probably Black Ops 2. Um, they had a really shitty version of that in Black Ops 2. It was like super zombie. Like you couldn't even control it. You were running around the screen like Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh yeah, that's lame. Yeah, it was it was crazy. But they did try, I guess. Props I recommend. Them, I guess. I recommend to people even if uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds doesn't sound like your thing, watch Twitch streams or YouTube videos just to check it out because it is pretty entertaining when people run into each other. Because as I was playing it, like you don't run into some people for like ten to fifteen minutes at a time. Well, that and answered my next you, question. And when you have one life and it's a battle royale, you know, last man standing, it is intense when you just see a person because it is it is like the polar opposite of Call of Duty where your life means jack shit. It's like, oh, I'll just respawn. Like when you everything right. matters, it is intense as shit. And I killed one person tonight, and that was panic fire because I, I shat myself. Because I'm still in the process of getting used to PC controls, trying to actually... Because I've n- always been a console player. I've never really played shooters on a mouse and keyboard. Which, even though technically they should be easier, if you've never done it, and you've only used joysticks, it is a little bit difficult to get used to. And that is my excuse for being terrible. So just run that up there. Uh, that's all we got for the PC gaming show. We're going to move over to Ubisoft. The first thing they... Uh, well, now... N- the conf- the conferences are in chronological order. When I basically read off stuff with them, it's just kind of a random order from just info that I found. Um, again, props and kudos primarily to Mr. Kirk Hamilton over at Kotaku because I've gotten a lot of my info from his wrap-ups. So thank Once you, Once again, Kota- another plagiarized show. Hey, it's not plagiarized if you cite your source. <laughs> 101 journalism, Ron. <laughs> Uh, Mario plus Rabbids, what which the hell? is basically the, I think he described it best as like Nintendo XCOM. It is like Mario and the Rabbids and he's actually controlling like RTS units. And I was like, what? That is out of left field for, for Nintendo. I feel like this year, Nintendo's like official motto is, man, eh, what the hell? Fuck it. Yeah, which in a way I, I really respect them. Just like <laughs> usually, usually they are the last company to do that. I know, like, but usually they are like we're gonna keep the thing that's popular, that exact same fucking thing for like three decades. Now the guy that's in charge, he's only been in charge for the past year now. Which guy? Uh, oh, oh yeah, they're yeah I know who you're talking just, about because their their CEO or whatever passed away. Right? Yeah, I remember I was reporting about it on the on the the main show. So um, he's only he's only been there for about a year now, and all of a sudden Nintendo's like, yeah, what the hell, fuck yeah, it. That. So, um, uh, legendary Nintendo designer Shigeru Miyamoto came out on stage to talk about it. It's a Ubisoft developed Switch game. 
That's Weird. why I was. That's why I was at the Ubisoft conference. Even though uh, interesting to see them actually bring out the Nintendo designer and everything over at the Ubisoft conference. That's a little bit odd. It is odd. That's actually a good sign for the Switch, though, because the one of the biggest issues with the Wii U was no third-party developers would touch that thing with a fucking ten-foot pole. Yeah. So it's 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 a, it's a good sign. It's a mix of open-world exploration with turn-based tactics. Similar to XCOM, as I had mentioned, it'll be out on Switch August 29th. That's the other thing. A lot of the Nintendo stuff that we'll get to in a bit, shit's coming out, like, some of it within, like, two to three months. They were able to keep a lot of it under wraps, um, especially one of the Metroid titles we'll get to, which is bizarre to me. They were able to keep it under wraps. Um, did you, Have you ever played any of the Rabbids games? I, I didn't even know that was a no. thing until, like, a week ago. But no, I I had never played any of them, but they do have one trailer for one of their games that I just fucking loved because you know you remember the Wii Fit board? Yeah. They had one that was compatible with that and it was just like a rabbit like sitting on its butt on the board like controlling the game with its butt. That's kind of adorable. So, yeah, they, they had that one trailer that I really loved, but I've never played the actual game. Yeah. Something else I've never played is The Crew. Did you ever play The Crew? I played the demo because, like we were talking you know, just earlier this week about lack of Gran Turismo so far. You need like, a little car fix. I, I need my car racing game fix, and I played the demo, demo or time trial for The Crew, and I promptly deleted it. It was fucking awful. You see, that was what one of the things is when the first crew was released at E3, just like the crew too, they were like pimping it out as if it was like this going to be this massive thing. And I never heard anything about the crew ever again. <laughs> it's I'm sure that it's an OK game, but you cannot for the life of you control the goddamn car. Well, if you couldn't control the car. Good news, you will now have dirt bikes and planes that will be difficult to control. Were boats in the first one? Because boats were on that trailer pretty heavily, too. Uh, probably not. Because I, I think that was their biggest selling point for the crew, too, was the expansion with the other vehicles and stuff. If you can't... Now, I haven't played it, so I'm just going off... Because like, I believe you, because you're a car junkie in a car uh, racing game junkie, uh, I should say. But, like, um, if they couldn't get the cars running smoothly... Like the Dude, planes, planes in games are a bitch to design. I was, I was like, damn, this is touchy. I need to adjust the sensitivity controls and stuff. No matter what I did, there was no controlling the vehicles. So yeah, I was just like, nope. Well, uh, I, I mean, now that's the thing too. Ubisoft's entire fucking business model is designed off the first game being shit, <laughs> and then fine tuning every little detail into like a badass game in the second iteration. It's true. That, that has now happened with almost all of their properties in the last like ten years. Um, just well, like most recent, like a uh, Watch Dogs went from like people shitting all over that to the second one being like a lot of people's like top five to ten lists. When really? It came out. Yeah, Watch Dogs. See, I remember two. seeing Watch Dogs two advertised and no one talked about it from uh, it was, any, I think anyone it was in my one circles of the, anyway. I think it was one of those things where the people that were willing to give it a chance, you know, really ended up in, ended up enjoying it. But that first one burn so many bridges that not many people were willing to give it a chance that's one of the things that's a danger with that business model mm -hmm. and why it would help ubisoft to actually you know get it right the first time every now and then uh next up uh i just included this because i thought it was one of the worst trailers of e3 that i had seen trans trans how do you is it transference Tran i looks like transference transference it, it was a vr game where they didn't show like really any gameplay and all it was was showing off that Elijah Wood is like one of the producers. Yay. It literally I watched the trailer, I couldn't tell you what the fuck it even is. Like I don't even know how they greenlit that for their conference. That was just my opinion. It was like I would like to at at the gaming conference actually see how the game plays. Not I mean no offense against Elijah Wood, but we're not there to watch Elijah Wood talk about a game. We're here to watch the fucking game. Just saying. Uh, next up, Skull and Bones. Did you get to watch the trailer for this? I watched it, and I don't know. Like, I think I'm intrigued enough to like watch Let's Plays, Let's but I don't think I'm intrigued enough to actually play. 
So basically, Skull and Bones is Assassin's Creed Black Flag, but only the pirate ship combat parts. Um, now, they have been teasing... Uh, Let's see, they showed PvP during their press conference, naturally, but based on the dev diary they posted, um, Ubisoft uh, the, the Ubisoft had posted, but it sounds like there might be more to it than just sea battles, but I don't know, because that was all they showed. That was all so they that's, showed. That's all we have to go on right now. And thought, honestly, it was kind of boring. It was... Like, I thought they had some interesting mechanics at play, like it was very technical... Like yes. I, I think some of like the RTS crowd might kind of latch onto it because it's a little bit of like a blend between like the Black Flag pirate combat with you know something like presumably like Age of Empires where it's more technical like the type of thing where if you're not paying attention you're gonna get your ass handed to you. Yeah. So I don't know. It looked it looked intriguing. I am uh, I'm so I'm always so strapped for cash. I can't really afford to buy anything without watching heavily Let's Play, um, like study in order to see if if it might be up my alley. Something that is absolutely up my alley is Far Cry Five, Ron. <laughs> and I was already going to be buying this game because I love Far Cry Four, but as soon as they show you your dog partner who will not only attack enemies but also bring you back their fucking machine guns to you, I was like <laughs> sixteen ones. Sir, sir, please them. stop. Fucking sir. Uh, and I don't know if we talked about it on uh, camera yet, but how awesome is the music? Oh my god. It's the perfect. usage of the music in that trailer is up there with like Guardians of the Galaxy usage. The, 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 now, I don't know what the name of the song, but it's the, the, you know, the bang, 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 bang song. I don't yeah. know what the name of it is. If you watch, they even timed up the guy's oh. pistol shots. Yes. With the fucking song, with that point in the song, and it's it's so cool. So the 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 it's mostly gameplay that they show. Really, what this trailer exists to do is to show you that like the main guy's going in on foot. He has the dog with him that I had mentioned. Uh, Boomer is the name of the dog, um, and he has uh, kind of like a sniper with him, providing cover fire. Yeah, and it was pretty. It was and pretty Optimus cool. Prime. And Optimus Autobot Prime. for hire. Um, I, I really like too when they cut to his like air support for hire or whatever, and then he just freeze frames with the thumbs up. I was like, I fucking love you, Far Cry. But yeah, it seems now this to me could end up being like one of those amazing co op games because like if you and I were like for instance like playing like one of us was like the sniper and one that, of us was the, on the ground. The minute it shows Optimus Prime barreling through and it says like co op friends for hire or whatever. I was like, hmm, like you're getting a little tired of Dark Souls 3 and I'm not that into Bloodborne. Maybe we need some Far, Far, some Cry, Far Cry Yeah, it was, it'll be you and me and the dog and yes. we'll just tear shit up. <laughs> Set the world on fire. The other thing too is, I don't know, have you heard what the storyline is for Far Cry 5? Nope. I don't know jack shit about Far Cry. I've never played one. Okay, the thing with Far Cry, the last couple, since Far Cry three and uh, and then the one I didn't, I didn't get to play through, but I watched a good chunk of it on Let's Plays. But with Far Cry four, what they continued from three is they have an emphasis on uh, enigmatic villains who are basically smart asses. They're very um, like with with Far Cry three, the main villain. Um, that everyone uh, kind of clambered onto was Voss, played by Michael Mondo, who was Nacho in Better Call Saul, if you remember him. Right. He's great in it. And then uh, Far Cry 4, it was uh, Pagan Men, played by Troy Baker, because video game. <laughs> and he was awesome, too. I fucking love that villain. Yeah, you sent me some clips of him. Yeah. And you remember, like, he was, you know, a very charismatic villain, which I, yeah. which I like. But the, the crux of Far Cry 5 after all their other games have been like on remote islands in like the Pacific and shit like that, you are in Montana where it is a cult of crazy ass religious white people who have taken over like a whole part of the state. Westboro that, Baptist Church. That is ballsy. And yeah. I fucking applaud them for that <laughs> because that took some cojones at this point in time to set a game around that because people are very touchy about shit like that. And for them to go full, like I was saying, like, you know, full remote to fuck it. We're going to, 
you know, talk about something potentially like important because mm-hmm. you know how sensitive people are about it. Like, I don't know. I I was very impressed. A lot of people didn't take it too kindly, but I think that was kind of the point. I think they intentionally went ballsy with it with mm-hmm. that choice. I just want to get Kingsman on a cult. I cannot freaking wait. I believe Far Cry Five comes out next February, and I want it really, really bad. Okay, this next one. Had you ever heard of Beyond Good and Evil? No, and I watched this trailer and I was like, the fuck did I just watch? Like, it is like an acid trip, is what Beyond Good and <laughs> Evil 2 is. So, I had never played the first one, but I'd always heard about it because it was one of those games where it was like a cult following. Like, everyone that played it, it was like their game of the year. It said cult following and it immediately started that song in my head. <laughs> yeah, right. Bang, 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 bang. Yeah, who doesn't like killing crazy ass murderous religious zealots? I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just right. Saying. Yeah, but with Beyond Good and Evil, uh, so the first game came out. Well, like in... Beyond Sense and Reason. <laughs> <laughs> Beyond Shrooms 2. <laughs> the first game came out in 2003, meaning when this eventually comes out, it'll be at least 15 year gap. So the old Sin City model. Right, right. When this one, this was one of the absolute biggest surprises at E3 because people saw they were like, no, it's been almost fucking 20 years. Surely this isn't happening. And then when I watched the trailer and it's like half talking animals and shit, I'm like, what the fuck is happening? And then they're not only talking animals. They are like very, very specifically drawn, like characterized. Yeah, I, I don't even know how to describe this trailer fully. You just have to watch it. Yeah, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, let's see, Ubisoft, uh, it was longtime developer Michael Ansel, or Ansel, who I'm assuming had worked on the previous game. This was one of those two, I did a little bit of research into it, just because I was so fucking curious about it, and it had, like, 9.5s and shit like that back when it came out. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just <laughs> don't know. It was so fucking bizarre, I think I have to watch Let's Plays on it just to satisfy my curiosity on how fucking weird it is. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know that I'm ready for that. I I don't know if I'm high enough. (laughs) I'm going to need a few shots before that, I think. Right. Something we are more than ready for is South Park Fractured Butthole. (laughs) Greatest game title of all time. But uh, now I am so sold on South Park, and I love these games so much. I actually didn't watch this trailer just because... we're getting a few months away where I'm just like, I'll just fucking wait for the game because I already am going to buy it. So I might as just like, whatever. Uh, you wanted to tell me something specific about the trailer. What were you wanting to tell me about it? So I went ahead and watched the, the trailer because I'm not as into them as you are, but I enjoy playing them. And not only does it seem like a vast improvement to me over the first one in like the control style and everything, but I literally busted out laughing when um um fuck i keep wanting to say timmy but it's not him jimmy 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 has flash powers dude he's a speedster <laughs> <laughs> that he is comes why zipping South- in on the left side of the screen that is why south park is the best it was it was um instead of the red streak cuz his yellow shirt he had a yellow streak when he came up well, they they already had me sold when they were just busting balls left and right with it, like in the in the original announcement trailers. They were making fun <laughs> of J.J. Abrams. They were making fun of Marvel. They were making fun of DC, especially like the whole fucking thing is just taking the piss out of Hollywood. And they, no one does that better than Trey Parker and Matt Stone. They went. You know how on Family Guy, Joe's daughter was Patrick Stewart internally. Yeah, that's Timmy in this. Oh, really? He, he's basically Charles Xavier, and when he's talking into other people's minds, <laughs> that's what he sounds like. I love that game already. Oh, have, dude. Oh, dude, you have no idea the shit I saw in that game. Now I kind of just want to say fucking watch the trailer. <laughs> uh, now, the one that it, I did... It was more gameplay. It wasn't really... Like, the, yeah, the they, mechanics... They, they, they put the story of douchebag into context, but... They really don't talk much story in it other than that. About, yeah, like with the gameplay, like the gameplay is much more nuanced now. There's a lot more going on. 
we'll have to wait and see if maybe you, they. You can tell. Up. You can tell just by watching the trailer that it's more polished than the first it's more, one. It's more polished because there were times just, in the first one that it just frustrated me. Uh. I just hope that they don't end up putting too much of an emphasis on the gameplay to the point where they oversaturate it. Because mostly we're there for Trey Parker Matt Stone's writing more so than we, we are to we play. We want the toilet humor. Yeah. We're more so there for the jokes and the gameplay, but I hope they find a good balance on it. Uh, now, I did watch the, the next South Park thing just because I was like, what the fuck is this? Did you Dude, watch the South Park Phone Destroyer It was trailer? glorious. It is fucking genius. Um, so it is a free-to-play iOS and Android mobile game called South Park Phone Destroyer. And Trey Parker and Matt Stone, I don't know how, but like every time they have to parody something for a trailer, they fucking crush it. I know. Uh, the it's it's so meta how they make fun of basically casual mobile gamers while also trying to sell their product. To them. <laughs> <laughs> but my favorite part is where they in, they have the like the little clip reel of all the classes and it's like cowboys versus Indians versus aliens versus cock magic. <laughs> <laughs> the, the cock magic and they're just like boom chickens i busted out laughing oh, i love it i love it i don't even fucking like phone games i might have to play that just fuck it's because it's fucking south park i <laughs> i'm so sold on everything they do i don't even fucking care i'll play it it's free to play Dude, um i don't the, the trailer of nothing else is worth checking out abs, abs, uh, freaking lutely uh that's all for ubisoft actually we got through that one pretty quickly uh, we're going to go through PlayStation now. Really quickly, I wanted to start off by mentioning like what wasn't shown. because <laughs> with, Anything with, you wanted. With with PlayStation, because of their, their time slot being like the last one, everything falls on the last conference where that's when you get bummed out when shit don't happen. And what we did not get was a Bloodborne 2 announcement, a Dark Souls remaster announcement, fucking anything from FromSoft which would bum me the hell out because I didn't need to see gameplay. I didn't even need to see art design. I would have liked the title and my webcam's fucking up again. I see. <laughs> I think it's your shirt. I don't know. Is it? Is it fucking up with the yellow? It's yeah. like matching it. Yeah, I think it is the yellow. I'm going to, we're just, I'll just go, you uh, were Pikachu, dude. I'll just go shirtless for the rest of the episode. I guess that's what we'll have to do. That, that'll get us. That will get us some views for sure. <laughs> at least we figured it out so I wasn't like staring, staring at my fucking webcam for the rest like why is it doing this it's fucking <laughs> curse of Pikachu uh, that's amazing so uh, whatever we were I, talking about all I needed was a title <laughs> card I, right. I, I, they have three games reportedly in development all I needed was the name of one of them and I would have been satisfied I was very disappointed to not see anything out of them I would have taken an image shown to me very briefly and like a coming soon, like not even the name, just something that like I recognize. It I didn't have to be. That. It didn't have to be Dark Souls related either. I would have like Armored Core, like the Armored. What's what would be the next iteration of Armored Core? Like Armored Core like five or six, something like that. I don't know. Armored what, Core, whatever 53. it would have been. What like literally anything with FromSoft's logo? I'm gonna call the Last Raven again. Yeah, but, any, yeah, anything with their logo would have been that would have made me happy. Last of Us Two was a complete no show. Even the Last of Us Two was debuted with the announcement trailer last year. Now, last of Us Two didn't need E3. It broke the internet on its own. Um, and Red Dead Redemption Two had no presence at all, which was very odd because it was originally slated for release this year. So you yes. would have thought we would have seen something. So I was really disappointed on all all those fronts. And then I I think I think the main thing that kind of the last thing we're going to talk about from the Sony conference kind of like saved all of E3 for me because of how much it got me excited. And you know what I'm talking about because we already teased it in the last VOD. But what Verge put it best, the Verge, I don't know who it was writing the article, but Sony last year had by far the best conference, one of the best conferences I've seen in a very long time from E3, if not the best. 
What yes. was shown last year was Destiny 2, Horizon Zero Dawn, Days Gone, God of War, a Call of Duty multiplayer session, uh, some uh, basically PSVR games, uh, Detroit, Spider-Man. What did we get this year at the E3 conference from Sony? All of those things were basically the major announcements, and that none of them were really announcements. Yeah, that was it. Was kind of a it was it was a well put together conference. It wasn't bad. It's just they had really high expectations set from last year that I think they kind of fizzled out on for me. They but didn't go, know what to do. Let's go through what they did uh, announce. Uh, Undertale is heading to PS4 and Vita. Um, are you familiar with Undertale at all? Not a clue. This is one of like the current indie darlings like mm-hmm. this is one of those games where everyone who has played it had it on their top 10 list if you if you went to look right now on steam it's probably like nine 9.5 out of 10 shit like that like people that play it love it uh it was i i do like their art style their gameplay was a little a little too meta for my taste and if, if anyone has seen the trailer that they had at e3 for it you'll definitely know what i'm talking about but it didn't really strike me as being up my alley but i mean i i haven't played it so um, hearing the word this is coming to PS4 and Vita blew my mind. The word Vita was said at E3. The word Vita caught my attention in the show notes. Which was like... I mean, when's the last time Sony talked about Vita at one of their conferences? I don't even Like know. three years ago, maybe? It's maybe. been a while. It's, it's been, been while. longer than that, probably. We had a Destiny 2 trailer. I mean, I'm pretty sure... I. I it's coming out September sixth. If if you are a, <laughs> I think the last time they mentioned the Vita, they were like pulling services away from it. Now that I think, yeah, that. that's I remember that. I remember, yeah, <laughs> on its anniversary. Yeah. yeah, I remember. I remember covering that actually when uh, for news articles. It's like Jesus Christ, guys. <laughs> uh, I didn't include much info for Destiny two because basically everyone that is going to be getting Destiny is going to be getting Destiny because people that love it really really love it. I do think Destiny 2 will end up being a lot better because the problem with Destiny 1 was they I forget what was the cause of it, but they, they ended up having like a sin of development hell that fucked with the story of the game. That is why so much of the story ended up getting axed and put in after the fact in like comics and online codexes and shit like that, which drives me crazy. Yeah. Cuz I play games for story. If you're telling me to leave your game to go to the website to read story on the game, fuck you. It, it doesn't even have to be spoken to me. My favorite game series is Dark Souls. It's all in fucking item descriptions. It's, it's as long as it's in the game. I'm not right. asking for much. But yeah, I do think it. I do think it will be better. And it has Nathan Fillion. That's always a, that's always a good start. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Did you watch the trailer for this? I did. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Is fucking bananas. Like it, I, I am not usually into the, into the mashup stuff like uh, DC versus Mortal Kombat and yeah, and all that. But I've played a lot of Marvel versus Capcom back when Funhouse existed, and um, one thing that it did that was very ballsy on the I think the previous iteration was they didn't have Mega Man; they just had Zero. And then now, I don't even remember it having a story at all. And then now we not only have a story, but Zero is back to like being one of the villains. Uh, my favorite thing is how they combine Ultron with Sigma from Mega Man. Yes. And you can actually, I just watched it earlier today, they have a story demo out. You can actually right now go and play it. Um, and it looks pretty interesting. I'm not a big fighting game guy or a big Capcom guy. So it, it's not. I'm a really... big Mega Man guy, but yeah, um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I like I like what they got going, but you know, much like I, you, yeah. not a big fighting game guy. Maybe Mortal Kombat Four for the 64 was the last one for me. The last ones I played heavily, Street Fighter Two and SNES was my favorite. And then the last one I remember playing after that was Dragon Ball Z Budokai, just because I was such a big Dragon Ball Z fan. I, that's, I was, that's true. I did Budokai did 1, Budokai. 2, and 3. And I am embarrassed to say how many hours I probably have in Budokai 3. 
So yeah, they were they were pretty solid. It's just that type of game just didn't stick with me as I like, aged for whatever reason. But to be fair, Budokai wasn't like to me like a true fighting game. Like the combos and stuff were so easy. It wasn't this whole bullshit like a lot of the fighting games have now. That's like impossible to do anything. Where it's like if you watch especially the the, the championship matches and stuff like that, where those dudes. You like I can't even register what is happening on the screen. They are so fucking crazy fast and good at those games. Where it is like you guys have turned into an art form. It is so ridiculous. I don't even yes. know. Uh, it releases September nineteenth, uh, and as I said, you can play the demo now. Uh, Uncharted uh, Lost Legacy was the very first thing shown, and I was so disappointed because the audio was fucked up for all the streams online. Really? Yeah, the whole first three trailers of the E3 conference online, at least the, I, at least the first two, maybe the first three or the, a good chunk of the third one, the audio was fucked up. We couldn't actually hear what the hell was going on. But Jesus. Uncharted looked pretty. It definitely looked pretty when I was watching it. But I, I watched it after the fact in its entirety because I'm, I'm a big Uncharted fan. This is one that's starring Chloe from Uncharted 2 and 3, and Nadine Ross, who was in four, she's one of the main characters in four. Uh, they're basically partnered up together, and it is acting as a sequel to the series, but it's a standalone expansion. You won't have to own Uncharted Four to be able to play it. Um, it will be released August twenty second for forty dollars. Now you just started Uncharted Two, right? Yes. So that's kind of spoilers for me. <laughs> yeah, uh, but. You'll end up. It's it's not really a spoiler, just because it's it's Chloe. Chloe's awesome, and you will end up by the time you finish two, you'll end up being happy this game exists because she is a really cool character. Um, let's see. That, and that's the, the biggest reason that Last of Us Two wasn't shown because I don't think they wanted to have two Naughty Dog games. They wanted to right with this one coming out within what like about two months. They needed to pimp this out more than they did the Last of Us Two. Horizon Zero Dawn is getting its first expansion called the the uh, the Frozen Wilds. Um, it is expected to launch later this year on PS4. No pricing info is available. No exact dates available. Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, Do you have any interest in that game? You know what's weird is Horizon Zero Dawn. Like I feel like I should be interested in it, but I just wasn't really grabbed. That, that's the, that's where I'm at. Like I feel like there's no reason why I shouldn't be buying it and playing it right now as we speak but for whatever reason i have zero interest in even watching it you know what it kind of reminded me of was actually bloodborne because when bloodborne first came out it for whatever reason it was i don't know if it was the the change in aesthetic or like the different uh not being actually within souls i don't know what it was but i actually put off playing it bloodborne came out in like march of 2015 I didn't end up actually playing it until after I'd already completed Dark Souls 3. It was the last of the Soulsborne games that I'd played. And I ended up putting it on for so long and when I finally started it, and it's like once I finally got into it, I ended up really loving it. So I could actually see this being that type of thing where I just, for whatever reason, didn't have any interest originally, and then once I eventually gave it a chance, like a long time later, it clicked for me, but I don't know, like... I would consider picking this up if it was like twenty bucks with all the DLC included, like a couple of years from now, once they have the game of like the year packs and year shit edition. like that. But yeah, right, right now I don't really, I I don't think it looks bad. I just don't have an urge to play it right now. I couldn't, I could end up once I get around to playing it, loving it. I just I, don't know. I'm a little bit more extreme than you because I don't even have the urge to follow it, watch it. I I, I have. There are a lot of interesting concepts going on in it because I've I've just watched the first couple of hours of it or so on Let's Plays. Yeah, to but. be fair, I judge anything video game related a lot harder right now because my time is so sparing right now. And like, everything's I, so fucking expensive. Everything is so expensive and I just have such little time. I get to play an hour, maybe two, if I play my cards right throughout the day. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. definitely. And there's always Dark Souls. Why would you play anything but Dark Souls? And there's always Dark Souls. And it always comes down to, do I play this game that I've owned for like five years and still in shrink wrap, or do I play Dark Souls? And Dark Souls wins a lot of the time. My back catalog of games is ridiculous right now. 
The next thing they showed um, was uh, an extended look at Days Gone. This was the zombie game where basically the zombies kind of act like World War Z. They kind of like pile up on each other. Now, what did you think of their gameplay trailer? Now, do you remember the trailer from last year? That they I remember had? the trailer from last year kicking ass, and I <laughs> fucking loved it. Yeah, the trailer from last year was much better than this year's. This the, year's turned me off of the game. It, it didn't turn me off fully off of the game, but... But you get what what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I could totally. Literally, get, I, I could I could hear it in your voice as you were bringing it up. You knew exactly what I was thinking. Which was so strange is because they gave it a lot of airtime. It's like eight or seven minutes of footage. I think it's ten. Yeah, uh, with yeah with the added on stuff. Because like, I you know. remember thinking, God, this looked so much better last year, and after several minutes, I went to look how much time is left, and I was like, it's ten fucking minutes of this? And it never really got better. I, it w- But the thing is, I don't think it's going to be a bad game. I just think they picked an awful segment to show. Now, the one part I loved was showing a little bit of the strategy behind how you'll be able to use the zombies. He ends up using the zombies as a weapon to clear out the camp of guys. That's yeah. fucking awesome. Like there there are a lot of interesting mechanics in it because it's basically kind of like open world last of us. Yeah. And that can be appealing if they do it right, but I totally agree. Like the portion of footage they decided to show, I was like looking at my phone part of the time while I was I was I actually watched the entirety of the the PlayStation conference. I ended up skipping through because when I saw how long it was and how much time I had left, I said fuck this. Yeah, and I started clicking it, I, through it. I, I I totally agree. They, they, I I think it will end up probably being a good game. I just think they, for whatever it, it reason, went from they, one that I would potentially pay full price to, for to I'll wait till it's like twenty dollars or half bucks. price. Yeah, I think it'll depend. I, I'm still looking forward to checking out let's plays of it to see if for whatever reason they just showed a shitty segment. So because last year's was great. Last year's was fantastic. especially with the the live orchestra going for it was fucking oh, great. God. Uh, so yeah, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see on that one. It's releasing potentially early 2018, which means in video game years it'll be released in 2021. So just don't hold your breath. <laughs> Monster Hunter is coming to consoles and the PC in the form of Monster Hunter World. Um, have you ever played Monster Hunter? I've never heard of it. Uh, it's a pretty. It big... sounded like it got quite a bit of applause. It was actually one of the biggest reveals. It was one of the biggest deals at the PlayStation conference because it was actually a surprise. That's. Mm. Oh, it would also just on a quick aside, what didn't help the PlayStation conference? They had the lamest crowd I've ever seen at one of these big events. They didn't react to shit, dude. It was last, last year. PlayStation was on. Fire! It like, felt like everybody a was rock concert, star. dude. Yeah. They had fucking Kojima come out on stage, like Michael Jackson with the fucking light show and everything. Yes, and everyone was like, it was electric. And this year, it was just like everyone going through the motions. People designing the conference, people in the crowd, fucking everybody. What position were they last year? Because they were like dead last this year, right? They were, I believe, in the exact same spot last year. They were. Were they? They were, because this year, technically, Nintendo was last, but they have their own thing. So right. you could say that they are the last one. I believe they were similarly. Well, I was going to say maybe it's fatigue or burnout, but if they're in the same position last year, that makes no same, goddamn sense. Pretty sure they were the last one before Nintendo last year as well. I could be wrong, but that's what I want to say off the top of my head. But Monster Hunter, uh, it's coming to PS4 and Xbox One in early 2018. It's coming to PC at a later date. This is one of those where... The people that are into it, that's like all they fucking play type of thing. So it is it is a big deal for them to get it going. Um, I don't know. It's just one of those things where it's probably a good game. I've never gotten a chance to give it a shot. I couldn't tell you if I like it or dislike it. Uh, one of the other things that actually got a good reaction out of the crowd was the really the only other surprise from the PlayStation conference, but that it was the, the Shadow of the Colossus actually getting a full-on remake, not a which was surprising. It's been up res before because they had it as part of like the Ico collection with Ico a few years back, but it, it was like full on fucking gorgeous remake. Yeah, I was going to say, didn't we see something from this last year? Because I don't remember it looking like this at no, all. The thing you're thinking of was from the same studio. That was The Last Guardian. Uh, that, okay. It was, it's the same developer. 
who uh, they did Ico Shadow of the Colossus, and then the last Guardian was in development hell for like 10, 12 fucking years, and it finally got released. Um, so it looks like now they're working on the remake of this. I really liked uh, the first game. Um, I think if anything, if now it was mostly a cinematic trailer. But if any of that looks anywhere near how it's going to look in the game, it will look gorgeous because this trailer was one of the more pretty ones to me at the the conferences. Um, you wonder who you were talking about? How like you couldn't give less of a shit about Days Gone? I cannot give less of a shit about Call of Duty World War Two. Yeah, it is I, like the ultimate. I cannot bring myself to get excited for a World War Two shooter anymore. I just don't think I can. Yeah, there's been too I, many. I don't care. I watched the whole trailer and I was just like, okay. Now here's the thing again. It's not bad. If there weren't 15 other World War II shooters out in the last like 10 it's years. It's just more Call of Duty. It's I just mean. more. I, th- I think they have shot themselves in the foot so bad by having their yearly releases that with eventually some, something is going to break the, the camel's back. It has to. I hope. It, because like... Because that's all pretty much gaming has become is just, you know, Call of Duty I'm every year and Assassin's Creed every year. Really hoping, I'm really hoping they get to the point that Ubisoft did with Assassin's Creed where they took a break. Just take a fucking break. Yeah. I, I like, last year's E3 and some of the stuff in this year's E3 has actually gotten me excited because... We always talk about the movie industry not wanting to take any risks anymore. The gaming industry has been that way, too, for a while. So, I mean, I, I can't necessarily blame them because it is expensive to develop a game. If you can recycle the concept and release it every year, from a business standpoint, I can't really blame them. But it's not doing any favors to the industry. It's really not. And what sucks, too, is Call of Duty is a little bit like... Um, World of Warcraft, if they lose half their players, they're still a juggernaut, so who fucking cares because they're making fucking bank. Right. I just, I don't know, I, I agree with you on that. I, I think it's I think it's hurtful for the industry, and what, like, what do they do next year? Everyone got pissed off when they went future with it, which, the one with Jon Snow voicing it, the Infinite Warfare one, that actually looked kind of cool to me. The one with Kevin Spacey, where it was, I think it was like Advanced Warfare. That one looked cool to me. And then it's just like, people get a little bit pissy. We're going back to World War II. People are going to be pissed off about this one as well. Just because they're like, well, it's fucking World War II again. It's like they can't win anymore. But they mm-hmm. still make money. So they'll still keep making games. I don't my, know. Uh, I, my, I wouldn't favorite, know my favorite title there so far is Infinite Warfare. Because that perfectly sums up that entire franchise. Right. Right. Uh, now we're going to get through the little clip show they had for PSVR games. I, I'm not sure what we're getting through, to be honest. So uh, the first thing, one of the first things they showed was um, Skyrim. I actually think Skyrim is a good pick for VR because my biggest complaint about Skyrim is that its mechanics are loose, especially compared to Dark Souls. Like Skyrim and Dark Souls 1 came out in the same year, and the gameplay mechanics in Dark Souls are so precise, they're so fine-tuned. When you connect with the sword with an enemy or an axe or whatever you're hitting them with, it feels tactile. feels you f- like you're actually hitting something. With Skyrim, it felt very poorly put together, like they weren't really advancing the mechanics. They were just kind of like retreading the same gameplay mechanics that were in Oblivion, which I loved Oblivion because it was perfectly fine for 2007, but I expect them to evolve when other games are evolving al- along the way outside of um, outside of Bethesda. But with a VR game, you can't have precision controls yet, so I don't actually have an issue with their controls in a VR game because it's, it's going to be janky anyway. So right. I actually think I actually think Skyrim is not a bad. Ch- I mean, it's it's a smart choice because it's going to make money because people fucking love that game. It's but I so janky, the, it's perfect for VR. I, I honestly think I think it's kind of like two peas in a janky ass pod type of thing. <laughs> so I actually I, I think we have yet another motto for our podcast. Two peas in a janky ass two peas on a janky ass VOD. Is that how <laughs> go? Yeah. Nicely done. Thank you. And at three o'clock in the morning, that's we might as well call it a wrap because we're not getting any better. <laughs> Uh, there was a military shooter shown called Bravo Team, which looked kind of generic. But again, 
I applaud them for trying to make VR a thing, but I just don't think the tech is there just yet for this to really work. Yeah. Uh, there was a game called Star Child, which was one of those where it was just like a whole bunch of flashing lights where I was, I think I would probably vomit if I put a <laughs> VR headset on and played it. <laughs> but it looked pretty in a nutshell. One that was cool, did you watch the trailer for The Inpatient? That I did. I that actually looked pretty cool. Because my whole thing, why I thought Resident Evil 7 was so genius making the whole game playable in VR, horror that. horror is where you win with VR. Yeah. Especially with you or me. When we get freaked out watching the fucking screen, when you put us in the headset, we would fucking yell and piss our pants. I think yes. that I think they need to they need to try and push horror even more. Like if it were me, three fourths of these games would have been v- PSVR horror titles. If it were if it were up to me, <laughs> uh, I'm saving the best for last. the The one I'm going to talk about next uh, was Moss, which was a game where it actually reminded me a little bit of um, was it Tell of Despero? Was that the mouse movie from a few years ago? Do you know what I'm talking about? It's kind of like no, medieval know. fantasy starring a mouse type of thing. It looked almost like a Katayan of that, but it was supposed to be its own thing. I don't know. They didn't have a whole lot of footage for it. But the the real what the fuck moment, maybe even more <laughs> so than Beyond Good and Evil 2, was the Resident or no, the Final Fantasy 15 fishing simulator. Now, Ron. You are on record as Final Fantasy VII being your favorite video game of all time. How do you feel just a handful of iterations later there is a Final Fantasy game with the Final Fantasy name attached to it for that? Because you watched the trailer, I'm assuming, right? You had to watch Oh, God, I watched the trailer, and I had no clue what the fuck was happening. Um... They were playing the, uh, they were playing the music along with it as if it was like this big epic thing. I'm like, yes. dude... This is a fishing game. Like, <laughs> what are we looking at right now? I, I have no idea. And what's sad is the world in Final Fantasy would make sense for VR. Why the fuck are we out here fishing out of everything you can do <laughs> in Final Fantasy? The the creature concepts that they have. I mean, the combat. Why? What, 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 what are we fish- You I mean, see in the fishing trailer. You see slightly off screen the cool ass creature design. Yes. And then they cut away from that to go fishing in the pond. Like what the actual fuck? Who signed up on this? Because that actually had a lot of money put into it. It was actually can... a really fucking polished, pointless yes. ass fishing game. <laughs> I mean, what was that what's that old fishing game? Bassmasters Pro or whatever? Yeah. It's like the Final Fantasy themed Bassmasters Pro. I I don't understand, Jeff. I don't understand. Uh, now I did like uh, the Kotaku guy. I, I I just pulled it directly. Oh God! He he typed it out. A Final Fantasy 15 fishing game. Open parenthesis. LMAO. Close parenthesis. That was basically my reaction to it because it's just like everyone is just like, what the actual fuck? I don't understand how that gets greenlit. Although I kind of appreciate that it exists. God damn this fucking Pokemon <laughs> shirt, dude! Like I would have been better off just fucking tossing the shirt off to the side. Shit, you not. Uh, but now I completely lost my fucking train of thought. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I'm at your apartment, I'm gonna start trying to put things in your computer's frame of reference. That's so yellow. Just throw it off, and you're just sitting there trying to figure out what the hell's going yeah, on. Yeah, prob- probably. Okay, let's talk. To, let's talk about actually one of the good things they had at the conference. This is one of the games I was talking about that I'm excited for. God of War. The more they show, the more I want to just go over and hand them all sixty of my dollars. It's fucking great. Yes, it looks amazing. And I played the first two games, but I kind of uh, lost interest in them because they were too samey. Like each game was basically just the same exact combat, just in a different, slightly different setting with slightly different maps. But like the switching it to the over the shoulder third person perspective, it, it looks very character driven. Like it is totally like Last of Us style, you know, him with the kid, all about their developing relationship as he's trying to like work out being a god and also having like a, a demigod of a son. Like that's I one of the things so. that they allude to. I don't really know. But 
the the all oh, the, the some of the combat is so it, like what I was talking about how like why we like Dark Souls so much is the combat feels tactile. This feels tactile when you watch it. Like it is. Dude, there's some brutal shit that happens. It's brutal. Too. It is awesome. Really great creature design. Like I included the image. Do we know of, anything about co-op? It wouldn't surprise me if they did. Because let's I, be have, honest, you and I are buying this game anyway. Yeah, we might as well play it together. I, I, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, they have they've really been, um, you know, uh, mumming the details for it. So. I cannot wait though. I want it. Uh, they they have said releasing early 2018, which again means releasing nah. 2020. Don't hold say, your We'll breath. die before it comes out. Earliest holiday 2018, probably because they are putting a lot of time and effort into that game. Obviously, I I think that's a title we have to play. I think that's going to be on NPC. Absolutely, absolutely. The other, now another one of those games, kind of like Horizon Zero Dawn, where I feel like I should be interested in it, but I'm just not. Is the Detroit game? How do you feel about then? This is like the the game they again fucking debuted last year, where it was like the Android uh, heavy game. Mm-hmm. The um, what it reminded me of, almost scene for scene and frame for frame, is uh, which Deus Ex is it we abandoned? Mankind divided. Dialogue X, mankind divided. Yes. Look up that original trailer i swear to god it's the same trailer just different would, setting different setting it different, is different characters it is very deus ex ish like yeah the tone i, I and swear the setting. to god as i was watching it it's like i've seen this trailer this is going to happen and it fucking happened i shit you not the um i don't like the setting and the this, the sci-fi aspects of it, like it's one of those things where I feel like the sum of the parts should interest me, and I'm just not that interested in it. I've also never really played any of David Cage's games. Um, what was the, what's the one, uh, the the one that he released with uh, Ellen Page and Willem Dafoe? I think that was one of his. Oh, um, Beyond Two Souls. Yes, I wanted to play that. It looked really cool. Uh, I it's one of those things. Like I really, really like his uh, Heavy Rain was the other one that I was I couldn't remember the title of. So like I like his concepts. I like how story driven they are, but I do, I can't explain why his games just don't. It feels it, flat. This whole tra- that whole trailer felt flat. Also, he didn't have the actors going for him in this that he did with. Willem Dafoe and Ellen Page, who are both great actors, so right. I don't know. I'll have to wait and see on that one. One that we don't have to wait and see because we'll be buying it at fucking midnight when it releases. Fuck yes, it is the thing that for me saved the whole it, fucking conference. It costs sixty dollars here. Why don't you take seventy? Just fuck it. Yeah, Spider Man, dude. Oh my god, I want Spider Man so bad. Spider Man, the full gameplay. Now, now. Here's the thing. This is what you give 10 minutes of footage for. Not yes. days gone where like nothing <laughs> happened. This is what you give prime Dude, time. I got an erection so fast and hard it knocked the phone out of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was like, I felt like a five-year-old kid in awe of the TV screen again. My jaw was just on the floor because like watching the whole I, thing. And it's the same reaction I had watching Arkham. For the first time, the thing is, is like now there are a bit of the Arkham uh, gameplay mechanics for his like hand to hand combat that have been moved over, and a little bit of like the stalking, like yeah. a little bit of the Arkham stealth mechanics, the predator stuff. Yeah, but like the thing, the thing that it made me think of was this feels like it's doing for Spidey what Arkham did for Batman, and that they finally gave him a game he deserved. Yes, like it feels like the character. Is this on is the point. game the hero deserves. This is the game that we fucking deserve right now. <laughs> um, after this, I don't know, shoot. man. I, I don't know. I, I I feel like only like the righteous and the godly deserve this game. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I you fucking know. want it. So the character is on point. I love how he is going out of his way throughout the entire trailer to save civilians, which is very Spider-Man. It's usually a thing that gets forgotten in an open world game. How yes. like in Arkham Knight, I'm pretty sure I killed more people than the villains did. I always because like you just fuck up. You fuck up that city so bad just going down the street. 
And yes. I love the Batmobile, but good goddamn, you destroy half the city. <laughs> like, by the time you're done by that game, there is no Gotham City left. It's just fucking rubble yeah. because of what I've done. It just, it was intense. It was like edge of your seat. The characters were done right. His trap, where he sets like the proximity webbing that sucks in the guy against the wall. The way that he uses his webbing uh, tactically, as far as like webbing at people's mouths to keep them quiet. It's like, oh my god, yes. I just love the attention to detail on getting the character right. The way he webbed up that guy when he pulled him from the ground up and he webbed him up and stuck him to the I beam. The uh, the the scene where he webs the crane and swings it into like three different guys. Like they get they have Spider Man actually being smart. He's not using brute force like he Dude, typically is in his video games. When he's on his way to save the king, king uh, pins. I kept wanting to say Kingsman, the Kingpin's soldier, and he shoots the guy and goes over the I beam, so his body weight pulls him out of the way when they're gonna go shoot. Yeah. Like, oh my god. I, I, I helicopter like the, pursuit. The villain choice is actually off the wall, which I also like too. Uh, there, do I didn't even he was so off the wall. I didn't even recognize the character until I didn't know. I don't know who the character is still. The, he is. Um, it's Mister Negative, and the reason we haven't heard of him is because he was just recently introduced in the last like five years. Really? By by in the comics. Um, so I like uh, I like an off the wall choice. I think it's I think it's cool because I think it's so cool to for us to have no fucking clue who we're dealing with. It makes it. He answered the guy's phone with, "Hey Willie," right? <laughs> I love it. I love Who's it. And the this, voice actor for Spidey. Yeah, I don't know. He if sounds actually... like he's half the cartoon we grew up with and half Tom Holland. I'm going to Google it right now. I don't actually know if they have revealed any info behind the scenes like that where we, we even could know. But um, you, you get what, I, what I'm saying? Yeah, I, like I halfway totally, in between both of them. I totally get what you're saying. I'm going to run over to IMDb real quick and see if I can find it. What, what, what were like some other things that jumped out while I'm looking it up from the trailer? Um, oh, my God, dude. They, they did the crazy emotive mask that I love. The aesthetic is very Spider-Man Homecoming. Oh, yes. I love... I actually really like the white emblem. I know a lot of people have said something about that. Yeah, um, just by itself, it looks kind of awkward to me, but mm. when it's in that package of a game, who the fuck cares? It is just all gold to me. When, when I first saw like a still of it, I was like, that's weird, but seeing it in motion, it's kind of cool, and they need to set it up part some house that you know it's not set in the MCU or anything. The uh, They also, uh, when asked about it on Twitter, uh, Insomniac Games replied that the white, the white logo, there is a reason within the game and it will be explained. So we'll have to just wait and see. I almost wonder if it's like that Batman type of thing where you know Batman's logo stands out because it's more bulletproof and he's trying to attract attention from bullet fire to hit him right. where he has more protection. I almost wonder if it's going to be something like that. You know, with it being white, it attracts more attention. I don't know, because with it being on his hands and knuckles and kind of on his wrists also, I mean... Yeah, I don't. I really don't know. I, could, I, I feel like he may have like a techno suit of some kind. So I found the one voice actor they have listed on the the IMDb page for the game is Peter Parker, Yuri Lowenthal, who is from looking at his filmography. I believe he is Ben Ten. I believe that is where oh, the okay. actor comes from. Uh, that all is right. all, which um, I've never didn't you aren't aren't you a decent fan of Ben Ten? I've actually never the seen original it. series. They've had like three since then. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm not but, surprised at all. Yeah, when uh, when it first started on Cartoon Network, I remember watching the commercials like, oh, that looks fucking awesome, and I watched the hell out of it. Yeah, it, it's a really cool concept. Uh, it's releasing in 2018. Um, another good sign, too, this game was not rushed to meet the release point of Spider-Man Homecoming, which 99 times out of 100 is what would have happened. Thank yeah. God we were at the point now where they're more concerned about making v good video games than they are meeting launch times with I think my buddy my buddy Bobby said it the best that looks like the best Spider-Man game since the N64 um, cartoon based one yeah I which would, I also played the fuck out of yeah like, uh, it is about time 
people have also likened a lot of it to uh, Spider-Man 2, the tie-in, which is apparently really good, which I don't remember if I actually played or not. I never played it. I played 1 and 3. I think I might have done the exact same thing now that I think about it. I think I gave up on 3 because I got stuck at some point. <laughs> not like I was missing Probably the whole same lot. place I got stuck. It's kind of fucking hard for no reason, but... Uh, I want to know if, because they kind of went, but like burned through all of his rogues gallery in the previous games. I wonder, and the movie tie-in ones did creative things like with their costume design and and creature design and stuff. I wonder what this one's going to do. Like, what has it not shown us? Well, because the if they're going Arkham with it, they're going to start burning through villains. Yeah. This, the Stinger shows Miles Morales, so I'm thinking there's going to be a Dishonored slash Infamous style DLC package where they pull an Arkham where he's just like slightly different mechanically within the same system. Like you remember how in Arkham like you could play Catwoman and she would feel different while playing her character than like Batman felt like more brute force, like brutality while she was like finesse. Right. I think you're gonna get a Miles Morales Spidey spinoff game. Um, and people will go batshit for it and buy it whatever $20, $25 price point they put on it. Uh, anything else you want to touch on with Spidey before we mm. end it on Nintendo? Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, switch to Nintendo because, dude, I could do an entire podcast on that Spider-Man It's trailer. fucking great. I it's We're not alone. A lot of people are on the it's, edge of their seat for the whole it's thing. It's probably a good time to remind people if you're an Amazon Prime member, it's $48 to pre-order. Oh, by the way... This is exclusive to PlayStation 4. Yes. What the fuck? Like that I, is I, I text Bobby the link to this trailer, and I text him, aren't you glad you have a PS4? And then a few minutes later, I got, that game, it looks gorgeous. And I was like, yes. You're, you're looking at that Spider-Man title, Last of Us, Uncharted, Bloodborne. Why the fuck would you buy an Xbox One? Yeah. Nothing even comes close to me. Uh, yeah, let's run through Nintendo. Most of it is stuff we're removed from. I just it's, It is important to talk about because I think Nintendo actually had a really, really good showing, even though they don't technically... Like, they call it the Nintendo Direct, but it is still kind of a part of E3, but they're in this weird gray area, but we'll, we'll yeah. talk about their announcements. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is coming to the Switch, releasing holiday 2017. Have you ever played Xenoblade Chronicles? I've never heard of it. Um, I have seen Let's Plays of it, and it's... It looked and felt like Kingdom Hearts without the Disney characters. Um, if I'm remembering it the correctly... The aesthetic was definitely Kingdom Hearts. If I'm remembering it correctly, I think it was one of those where it had like an interesting setting and aesthetic and everything, but it is one of the more like repetitive JRPGs, which doesn't really uh, sit well with me for my personal taste, but I don't know. It is a pretty big title for the Switch to get. A Kirby game is uh, coming to Switch Dude, in 2018. Fuck yes. That trailer it, was incredible. Yeah, it's a really cool trailer. And Kirby with the little Link hat is adorable. Uh, yeah. Um, I love it. That's, that's been around since the SNES days, I think. Oh, is it? See, I've never played a Kirby game, so I thought that might have been like a new but, one. But, dude, combining powers kind of blew my brain. Well, that moment when he's got the sword power and he combines it with fire and just does a full on like get to get ten show from Bleach, I was like, "What the fuck just happened?" Yeah, it was a really cool trailer. Um, I've never played Kirby before, but like, if I were to be able to get access to, it, I would totally fucking play that. Just check it out; it looked really fun. Dude, I'm probably gonna be hitting up Phil to steal a Switch so you can play Kirby. Yeah, um, he used to um, he used to bring over his Kirby game all the time because I had no other way to play it. So. Well, actually, you would have to steal his brother's Switch because Philip has yet to get one. Philip was having really? to do the same thing to her because it's, uh, you have to like fucking shank someone and uh, like go through like the black market to find the fucking Nintendo Switch. Right now, it's ridiculous. They have been a little bit better about doling them out, but they're still not like easily like PS4 or Xbox One accessible Did yet. They have a shortage for every console. Let's just be honest; they do it intentionally. Especially, well, especially after I, th I think part of the reason why was the Wii U failing miserably. 
uh-huh. because they they ended up having so many Wii U's that they produced sitting collecting dust that they lost so much fucking money on the hardware that they're almost like doling them out on a need to like a basically like a when people are actually in need of it that way they never overproduce type of thing so um one of their biggest announcements a core rpg in the pokemon series will be releasing on uh, switch that is um, weird which is one of the things that's been really interesting about the Switch to me is that company moving forward competing with themselves because the Switch's biggest thing is its portability, but the Nintendo's biggest thing for the last 10 years has been the 3DSs and the 2DSs and everything like that and the DS before that. So I think it makes complete total sense for them to have a Pokemon RPG for the Switch. It is a massive deal if it is only on the Switch and that it's an exclusive. It's not the, the exact same title on both the three. For what it's saying, for what for what they were saying, the system will receive a main entry and it will be exclusive to the Switch, which is a potential system pusher for it. I was asking for this back when I was still into those games before they went and fucked it all up and made it weird. I, I Even though... Even though you and I aren't really playing them, though, it's a genius business move because that will sell switches. It would have been even can... more genius however many years ago. I mean, yeah. Well, at least Nintendo finally realized that money <laughs> is a wonderful thing. <laughs> There's no release date for the Switch RPG yet for it. Um, there will be new Pokemon games out later this year. They have Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Um, obviously, the alternates to Sun and Moon, which were available on 3DS last year. Um, they have the the Pokemon slash Tekken thing. Have you heard of that? The the Pokken or Pokken? I don't know how they pronounce it. I've heard of Pokken, but I didn't know what the hell it was. All I've ever seen is Pikachu with like a headband. Yeah, yeah. It's essentially their Marvel versus Capcom but with Pokemon and Tekken. They but have Pokemon's character. already a battle fighting game. They just did it because of reasons, basically. <laughs> uh, it's the remaster of last year's Wii Fighting game. Uh, it will include new Pokemon and uh, new it's modes on the It's remastered. It's only a year old? Well, they're launching it, it looks like, for the Switch as well. But yeah, they are remastering it from, I'm assuming... I don't know. Um, at least... Now, here's the thing. You and I, yesterday, were given Nintendo shit for not fully taking advantage of Pokemon... And we'll get to the next thing. And they made us look like like Reggie was just sitting back. Like, I'm gonna make these pricks look like morons because they did everything we gave them shit. Because like it was like Pokemon, 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 Pokemon. There's like fucking five Pokemon games in development. Our bodies were not ready. Our bodies were not ready. Who would have known? Nintendo figured out they liked money. Um, the other thing made me look like a dipshit personally was I was like, how the hell is there not a Metroid game? It was like Reggie. Was just sitting back, waiting, <laughs> with his fucking body ready to drop. You not know what really one. gets them? There will be expletives, guys. It's like fuck those guys. Not <laughs> one, but fucking two Metroid games that they announced. <laughs> Metroid Prime Four is in development for the Switch. It is the the first. Let's see. Okay, the last actual Metroid Prime game, Prime game that wasn't a repackaging of past titles or a mobile title, was. Prime 3 Corruption back in 2007. Decade. How the fuck do you go a decade without a Prime Metroid title? Or like a, some form of console main Metroid title. But they finally realized they like money and there it is. But I would have been stunned with just that one. But then they announced Samus Returns which is a remaster, like kind of like a reimagining I guess of uh, Metroid 2. It's a not very subtle title. Right, uh, Metroid 2 Return of Samus back on the Game Boy in 92. Good for them, dude, for finally fucking realizing people like Metroid. <laughs> I don't know why it took him 10 fucking years, but these are big deals. Like, that Samus Returns looks really cool. I liked what they were showing, what they were kind of updating it. Because, like, I haven't ever played the um, the Prime series. That's first-person shooter. I have played the side-scrolling ones every now and then. So, like, I'm definitely... I still own a 3DS, 
It's probably covered in dust somewhere in my closet, but I own one. So that actually gave me a reason to play it when it comes out in September. So I don't know if I'll buy it, but I will definitely steal it from Philip to play it on my 3DS. <sighs> but um, let's see. Next up, Switch will be getting a y- new Yoshi game in 2018. Have you ever been interested in the Yoshi games? I have never really played them. Are, are, what are they, what is it the concept of the Yoshi games like what what sets them apart it depends on which one this is tied to but the one I always think of is um, Yoshi's Island and the game is just annoying I could not say I have never played any of them um Breath of the Wild uh, is getting its first DLC. June 30th, just a couple of weeks away. Uh, it's the first of two expansions uh, for the new Zelda title, which is, yeah, it's on Wii U and Switch, so that'll actually be uh, yes. on both of them. Uh, it's called the Master Trials. It launches June 30th, while the Champions Ballad, which is the second expansion, that will launch during this holiday season. Um, it's nineteen ninety nine to get both of them. I think that's the only way they are accessible. You have to purchase uh, both of them together. Um, I haven't talked to Philip yet, but I would imagine Philip probably be playing. Um, he the, seemed the like DLC. he was pretty on board when we were texting the other day. He'll probably be checking out the DLC for it. Uh, Rocket League is coming to the Switch. Um, now I included a picture of it just so you'd have like an idea of what I was talking about. But had you ever heard of Rocket League? I have never heard of it. This is one of those, and I actually have the Nintendo version of like Twisted Metal. So it is like fucking is the. When you explain it, it's like the dumbest damn thing. It is basically soccer with vehicles. And when you explain it, it sounds like fucking dog shit. But when you watch it, you kind of get why people like it because it's just ridiculous. And like they have like power ups and shit. It is a little bit twisted metal, just with more of like a sports take on it. I went and included the Steam ratings just to show you how fucking crazy people are for Rocket League. The Steam rating, based off 108,000 views, is a 9 out of 10. That's crazy to me. But again, I think it's actually a smart deal because, like, it like at the end of the day, if they're successful, who cares? That's what they're going for. Right. It doesn't matter how fucking random it is as long as it, it, uh, it sells and if people enjoy it. I mean, who am I to fucking judge? So it's uh, about soccer. Basically. Fire Emblem Warriors um, is, let's see, it is a Fire Emblem game that's upcoming, but they've removed the turn-based elements out of it. So that's what I surprised guess, me. So I guess it's, if you, so if, if you take it and it's a little bit more action-based with their type of game, it also makes me think, it almost makes me think of like Platinum. Like I could kind mm. of see it playing like a, like a Platinum game. Yeah. Uh, it's releasing on both the Switch and the 3DS this fall. Uh, it's glimpses of fan favorite heroes such as Marth, Krom, Corin, Ryoma, and Xander. I've never played a Fire Emblem game, so I'm just spitballing. Closest I've ever come to Super Smash Brothers. Um, probably the same with me, but Fire Emblem is another one where the people that love it fucking it's like their favorite franchise. I know they're like crazy for it. Crazy for Fire. They also have a mobile game going on right now, I believe. I believe so, yeah. So, Fire Emblem is a big deal. Um, and the last thing we had to talk about is Super Mario Odyssey releases what October the actual fuck was going you, on in this trailer. Did you watch the trailer for it? I watched the trailer. He, like, he has, like, uh, the hat powers where you can control enemy types and stuff like that. Apparently. It, it seemed actually, like, so weird. It was kind of interesting to me because they've never done that before, have they? Not that I'm aware That's, of. That's and if, thing. if his what hat could thinking? fucking do this all along, where was that in Super Mario Brothers on NES? What was the other thing we were talking about from Nintendo? I'm looking back through my notes. We were like, they finally did something new with it. Because that was kind of like my... rabbits. Yeah. That's like my, my whole point is all of a sudden, overnight, Nintendo is trying weird new stuff, which I appreciate. I would rather you try something new and fail then pull a Call of Duty and crank out the same fucking shit over and over and over again. And here's the other thing that they've learned. The Wii U 
didn't have shit to play till like five years into its life cycle, which by then it was already dead. Yeah. The Switch just came out. Within the first two years of the Switch being out, there is a major Zelda title, a major Metroid title, Yoshi, Mario, Pokemon, Xenoblade Chronicles. Um, Let's see, what else am I forgetting? They will have Rocket League, a Fire Emblem game, and uh, probably something else I'm forgetting. All of it. Like... I got to tip my hat to him. I think Nintendo had the best showing out of all of them. I really do. Because because Sony regurgitated so much <laughs> of their stuff, I yeah. think Nintendo had the best showing. It's not all stuff that I'm personally going to play, but I applaud them for actually going all out for the It's Switch. weird that they're having games. Right? Like they had, I, I, I it, just it, think of them as making very expensive paperweights because they don't usually have games. And it is just like major title, major title one after another, all within the first two years of the system. I think it's very impressive how they've had their little turnaround. Because now, the thing is, too, they're not just having big titles announced at their conference. They're having exclusives. Yeah. A lot of the quote-unquote exclusives that Microsoft and Sony were pimping out at their conferences outside of Spider-Man were, for the most part, stuff that's going to be out on other platforms. Call of Duty is out on both. Uh, God of War is another one that will be exclusive to Sony. That was another. That's another big get for them. But especially with Microsoft, like Nintendo had more exclusives than anyone else. They actually have titles. They have portability within all of those fucking titles. Like, they they have actually made the Switch into um. Like for me personally, I would be much more tempted to buy a Switch than an Xbox. You have literally no reason to get an Xbox if you have PS4. Right. If you are like with you, how you were kind of sort of interested in Kirby, I am fairly interested in Metroid. There, you can talk yourself into it if you ever have the expendable income easily, especially with all them being portable. And if they ever get that Dark Souls little trilogy thing on Switch, and I can have portable Dark Souls, I will march my ass at two <laughs> o'clock in the morning to Walmart to go buy a Switch if I have to. For that. <laughs> yeah. What? What? What did you think? Like, I think Nintendo had the best showing out of all of them. What, what would you say? I would say that they probably did. It was, even though a lot of the stuff's not anything I'm interested in, in they actually have games, and they actually had shit that we hadn't seen before. Like, even all the other conferences, the stuff we've heard about or seen before, and we're just not getting yeah. gameplay or whatever. Um <laughs> They didn't have any games last year to do that with. So, yeah, it's interesting. I have a a question I thought about after we'd moved on earlier that I saved for here because it just seemed appropriate. So, Ubisoft is making the Mario Rabbids game. Is that the first time they've ever lent Mario out to another company? I can't think of another game that they just said, here, here's our character, make your game. I think you might be right because none of them, I can't, like, nothing's coming to the top of my head. Everything else is always just straight up Nintendo, right? Yeah. Um, they're, like, I gotta hand it to them. Like, they, I thought they had a great fucking conference. Like, if I had, if, if I had been the type of person who had been, you know, really, really burned by the Wii U, which so many people were, like, that could have been, the the turning point for like your your fandom with Nintendo because you know they fucked you out of like what four hundred dollars for that console because you, you didn't yeah. it ended up sitting on a shelf really for the first like three or four years of its life cycle. Yeah, it I was just ridiculous. think it's I think it's insane the level of turnaround they have had just a few like a handful of years later like it is now like boom they listen to every single customer complaint. There was not one, but fucking two Metroid games out of nowhere. Well, like ever since the Wii, like they've been going in and out of the red every year. Like they they were in trouble. You and I were talking about how in like five to ten years they'll just be making games and not be making consoles. Well, I I think uh, they were always going to be having mobile games. It was the console home console, ver- but with like right. Switch, like. They fucking crushed it with that. Con- like, I think the concept was great. I think they did a really, really good job marketing it. Having, I know it sucked for people who were wanting it earlier on in the Wii U cycle, but I think holding off on Zelda 
obviously fucking worked for him because like we we talked about how like uh Zelda sold more copies than Switches. Yeah. Like shit like that. I yeah, I think I don't think it's close how much they they crush it. As, and it wasn't just the other ones being lackluster. Like I thought it was just genuinely impressive. Um, what is your best in show? One thing that's not Spider Man, because Spider Man's like the obvious choice. Yeah. Um. Last year's mine was Resident Evil Seven, and just getting around to playing it the last few weeks, it, I ended up loving it. So I was I was pleased with that one. I forget what yours was. Uh, I think I think yours was actually I just kind of what like mine was. I believe yours was just kind of like Bethesda overall. How last year's Bethesda conference Bethesda was really good. Bethesda walked away from that that conference just winning, just like all straight up the, Charlie Sheen winning. All of it was awesome. Everything they did was amazing. Now it it turned out later that that wasn't necessarily the case with some of those games like Prey and everything, but. From a conference it, standpoint, they did. They had a, they at had a the conference. Time. I mean, they fucking those dude. The marketing campaign for Prey was as good as the Netflix marketing campaigns. Like it was yep. impressive. Yep. Um, I don't know, man. I gotta say, God of War is really grabbing my attention. The, the two that immediately I've never up, even played a God of War game, and I think that's one of the selling points behind that title too. Is it doesn't matter. Yeah, it is such a reinvention. That it doesn't matter. I've always, I've always wanted to, and I've, I've played the demos for everything that they put. Yeah, out. they're perfectly, they're perfectly fine games, but I think it's also one of the best instances of a franchise reinventing itself because yeah. they have kind of like brought it into modern times. Like it plays like a Naughty Dog game more so than mm-hmm. a God of War game. You know, I think the the two that jumped to my mind were God of War. And Far Cry Five because I fucking love that Far Cry Five trailer. Dude, that trailer! I amazing. love how, I love how ballsy their setting and their their storyline is. Those two are so close that if I if I had to give it to one, I'd probably give it to God of War. Actually, I, think I was gonna say it's got to be God of War with that creature design and that and big combat design. lizard. Dude thing at the end like do not want I thought it was going to eat them I thought that was going to be the end of the trailer <laughs> yeah uh, and he's just going what they don't show you is he's just going full Drax inside oh, oh dude they did that I would like, oh it's so good so good <laughs> but yeah overall especially compared to how good last year's was especially from Sony I was overall very disappointed in in E3 this year, and I think it kind of shows with some of the crowd reactions because like the people at the PlayStation conference were just like asleep. There was like roofies handed out in the pre-show or something at the PlayStation conference, and there was much rejoicing. Exactly, but um, you know what's funny is like we've also we've always been giving Microsoft shit about not making it a competition with Sony. I think if if even half of the, the the Nintendo exclusive titles that we talked about end up working out and they have such a dedicated hardcore first person fan base they haven't even begun the potential that the Switch has with third party because yeah. third party developers are actually interested just like with that Ubisoft thing that would never have happened with the Wii U because none of the developers would touch that with a 10 foot pole like we'd mentioned earlier so this yeah. I think I think the biggest competition for the PlayStation 4 within the next five years is the Switch and not the Xbox. I when, really was do. The la- when was the next time you ever thought you were going to say Nintendo was competition? Right? We were talking <laughs> just last year of them going software only for the home console market, and now they just crush it. And I think when they have their first... Do you see what happens when you listen to their will-be expletives? Do you see what happens? Right? Yeah, Reggie, you're fucking welcome, Reggie. <laughs> Um. Yeah, and I when they have a hardware refresh, our, and they, our bodies is ready to receive some of that fat switch cash. Right? Yeah, you we the need the idea. Yeah, we need some royalties. We could use the help. Yes. <laughs> but uh, the uh, the the thing is, like, I think when they have their hard their first hardware refresh and they iron out all the bugs with the switch, the the fact that the switch works right now as well as it does is a bit of a miracle on its own because there are so many ways it could have gone wrong with how Dude, ambitious it is. I was gonna say I I still don't trust that hardware. 
I think once they have that first hardware refresh. All right, we are back. We were a minute away from signing off the fucking vodcast. And of course, not only does Skype crash, but what happened with the updates, Ron? Oh my God. Windows apparently had done automatic updates. So Skype crashed so hard, I had to restart the computer, which meant I had to sit through all the goddamn updates first. Thanks, wind blows. <laughs> I see what you did there. All right. That was, well, that, that, that three-second synapse to make that joke is more time that Microsoft spent to name the Xbox One X. I can probably <laughs> guarantee you that. But yeah, uh, we basically got all the conferences discussed. We talked about our best in show. So with that, were there any other things stuff right before we sign off that you wanted to mention about E3? Other than we're glad it's fucking over because I'm tired of talking about video <laughs> games. <laughs> no, I think we pretty much covered it. I mean, we got three hours of coverage up on the net. I think it's incredibly interesting how passionate we are about talking <coughs> about video games and not about playing video games. Unless right. it's Dark Souls. Unless it's glorious, glorious Dark Souls. <laughs> Please like and subscribe. That gets you all of our content. We also have Let's Plays, which we are going to be recording more of this week. I'm excited about. Yes. If our technical difficulties will actually let us, who knows, with our horrible cursed luck, but we will try. We will give it a, a, the old college try for sure. Social media links for Facebook and Twitter are in the description below. And please share us out. We would greatly appreciate it. This has been E3 2017 brought to you by There Will Be Expletives. And there were expletives, but there were also good times to be had. I'm Jeff. <laughs> I'm Ron. See you guys.